Welcome back to the PopCon Playhouse. Happy Halloween. I'm your Generation 1 host, Victor. This is PopCon, a salute to all pop culture, but mostly the 80s. However, today, we're going to go way back, way, way back in time to about the 1930s, 40s, and 50s and talk about a subject that definitely has stood the test of time through the 80s and beyond. I don't know if you know, but I'm a huge classic movie, Golden Age of Hollywood fan. See right here with my King Kong shirt. And you can probably agree that the Golden Age of Hollywood isn't really an intellectual property per se, but what you can't deny is the indelible mark the Universal Monsters have played on that. They are certainly a franchise that has grown and grown and grown and become a monster merchandising uh, empire on its own. So somewhere early in the 2000s, I started collecting a, a line of Universal Monsters by Sideshow Toys. Early on, the Universal Monsters were only done like in posters and prints and the rare collectible, uh, not very mass marketed, but Sideshow Toys in the early 2000s had uh, been able to create these uh, mass market retail collectibles on the Universal Monsters. And I'm not talking they were just simply the monsters. They were beautifully, meticulously created, articulate action figures of the main Universal Monsters that the company itself brands as uh, the monsters themselves. So now, the image that we see often, I wanted to collect those characters and they didn't just deliver, they delivered recreations of the actors and even some of the sets. I absolutely adore them. Um, so yeah, as a huge fan and because it's Halloween, let's take a look at my collection and what they've left us in the pop culture zeitgeist. Let's begin with simply saying I'm not the best at housekeeping my action figures and collectibles as it really needed to get dusted and there's dog hair on the cape. But that cape is a perfect complement with the mold of this suit. The Phantom of the Opera played by Lon Chaney in 1925's silent film is creepy as ever with that detailed face. He used to hang around the Universal Studios Hollywood tram tour at the station and scare the hell out of me. He comes with an alternate head which was unique at the time and it is of his, uh, I guess, quote unquote, Quote, normal face uh, covering his disfigured one. In 1931, Bela Lugosi starred as Dracula. This figure was the last one I have received or have added to my collection because it's very hard to find and very costly because it is the one that resembles Bella. Now, this cape is also a soft product uh, with dog hair, but it is easy to put on and looks as it's in perpetual motion. The bat may seem a little cheesy, but it's perfect with the stone walkway uh, that is fit for his gothic castle. Also in 1931, Frankenstein's monster made his debut. Starring Boris Karloff, Boris didn't have any speaking lines, um, but did a fantastic job. And the likeness of this collectible is gorgeous. And also all that detail, these articulated action figures do have great movement in their wrists, in their arms, in their elbows, their waists, and their knees. Um, but they're also very uh, fragile. So I'll get to that in a moment. We see his torch as well, which is uh, part of his undoing. Now, Boris quickly starred in The Mummy just a couple of years later, and this iconic look is very, very short in the film, just the beginning. This makeup is iconic and beautifully done, and the action figure really holds true to it. It includes the chest where the scroll is found and some other uh, artifacts like the hieroglyphic um, tablet there. But The Mummy, this is where Boris got to speak a lot. And lucky for us, because it's not the best of the Universal Monster movies, it did uh, bring in the Brandon Fraser version in the 90s. We'll be right back. Hey again. You know, horror might be their genre, but these were not slasher films. They did lay the groundwork for tons of Universal and other studios horror movies in the future, but these are more classified into like uh, gothic horror or suspense thrillers. However, their importance in film history laid um, gave us the rules, the origin story, and as we grew up, we refer back to these original um, movies and these characters for what we know and, and remember these um, horror villains to be like. So if you like this content or seeing my collection, please consider subscribing, like, share, comment, help me out on the channel. I hope you enjoy seeing these collections, talking about toys and helping me boost up my toy shelves behind me. Thanks everybody, now back to the show. In 1933, Claude Rain starred as the Invisible Man. Now this collectible I don't have yet, but really hope to uh, get it to my collection soon. Claude Rains wasn't a huge star at the time. He did speak the whole way through, but you didn't see him until the very end of the movie when he dies and he reappears. Now, everyone knows the Invisible Man, but this movie isn't talked about as much. It is a fantastic film and it does co-star Gloria Stewart, who you may know as Old Rose from Titanic. Well, I hope to add him to my collection to finalize it. 
This is The Bride of Frankenstein from 1935. This follow-up to Frankenstein is often um, talked about as even being better. It is a great film, and this action figure comes into pieces. It has an alternate head, and underneath the cloth is this mummy-wrapped version of her, like when she was on the table being reanimated. However, she does come complete with the look that we're all familiar with, at the end with the robe, and of course that perfect face, which looks so close to Elsa Lanchester's uh, bee-stung lips. They are fragile figures, like I said, um, this uh, electrode or whatever it is from the lab has broken off before, and they're soft material and can bend with heat, which is how I have her propped up with a little piece of paper there under her foot. So they are fragile, arms have broken off, and they are soft, but they still look phenomenal, and I love having them. Next up from 1941, Lon Chaney Jr., the Phantom of the Opera's son, played The Wolfman. This iconic movie is a lot of fun, and although things have changed, like Dracula, The Wolfman movies are one of those that keep repeating and repeating and repeating. It does give us a lot of the uh, mythology and the rules of the werewolf that we know today. And finally, in this collection from 1956, one of my absolute favorite to this day to watch is The Creature from the Black Lagoon. Now, I know this was in the 50s and you could catch it in 3D, but there weren't enough gimmicks in there to um, to really, when you watch it normally, nothing is taken away. The, the beautiful creation, the costume of the um, creature is so realistic and so detailed and well done. And so is this figure. I love its color green. All of the frills and the fins also comes with a, um, a harpoon gun and net. This is one of my favorite films and um, actually do like its sequel as well. So love the base, which has sort of a liquid lagoon um, part as well. So there we have uh, the collection that I consider the Universal Monsters. Of course, we could all argue there's more. And um, I'm still looking for that Invisible Man, and I hopefully will find him this holiday season. But they look fantastic, and I love to have them on my shelf. Well, that's my collection as it stands. And like I said, I've got one more to gather. A lot of people will think about King Kong as a horror movie, and that's great. You can argue your point. That's fine. I look at it as an action adventure more than horror. There is some suspense and tension, but so did Indiana Jones. We don't consider that a horror movie. But we could argue you who's in it and who's not. That's really not important. Universal Monsters is a fantastic franchise that when compared to today, yeah, these things are tame in comparison to what we have, but they really were the ancestors of uh, what great horror movies we have. There were sequels to all of these famous films, some not so great, some okay. Um, the Mummy sequels and the, Black, and the Creature from the Black Lagoon sequels weren't so bad, but there's other great Universal horror movies like White Zombie and Black Cat. One thing we know for sure is that this franchise is gonna live long after we're all gone. Now, if I could just get that Invisible Man for Christmas, however, I hope I can see it. Thanks for joining me, everybody. I hope you enjoyed looking at my collection, talking about the Universal Monsters, and seeing these gorgeous recreations made by Sideshow Toys. So, especially during this time of year, I think it's great to remember and represent, which is what I am doing back there. So thanks again. Happy Halloween, everyone, and check back more for great content. Please subscribe and like and comment. And until next time.